Hello everybody, this is Balrog Colonel, and welcome back to Ben Jordan, Paranormal Investigator. Ho ho, it looks like they did find some firewood after all. And I realized that a career in international relations wasn't what I wanted to do with my life, so I decided to become a freelance paranormal investigator. Uh, ben Jordan tells his life story to a stranger. Uh, that's an interesting career option. And that's the response. Yeah, I know. My parents thought I was nuts when I told them. Well, maybe they had a point. But at least I'm out here actually on case and not sitting around at home waiting for the phone to ring. I'm sure your family will be proud of you after you solve this case. I know what you mean about having their approval, though. My parents practically disowned me when I told them that I wanted to be a park ranger. They wanted me to follow in the footsteps of my father and grandfather and become a doctor. But I told them I was more interested in saving the world than saving people. Well, speaking as experience from a uh, ex-park ranger, uh, yeah, you don't save the world as a National Park Service ranger. Not at all. But, oh well. Oh, that's not the best thing to say to a doctor, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, Ben, making light of things. Not at all. They, of course, took it the wrong way and kicked me out of the house. But I was able to land on my feet and get a job here. Well, I'm glad it all worked out for you in the end. Uh, no, I, I don't really think it did. Because, uh, you know, he was estranged from his family and everything. Yeah, it's pretty uh, depressing when you think about it. You're right. We should de we definitely need to be well rested for tomorrow. <sighs> you go on ahead. I'll put out the fire, kind of like I put out my dreams uh, every night. Oh, all right, Rick. Good luck. Sleep well, little buddy. You go into the tent and quickly fall asleep. However, around 2 a.m., you are awoken by a strange noise coming from somewhere near the camp. Uh, hey, Rick, did you hear that? It sounded like growling coming from the west. Rick, I have to go to the bathroom again. Where'd he go? Eh, and where's my rifle? Oh, Ben. Darkness. In the campsite. You stumble outside and see that Rick is nowhere to be found. However, there is a pervasive odor coming from the west of the campsite. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know what that means. Let us explore. Deet, 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 deet. <gasps> it's the skunk ape. Rick, what are you doing? Ben, I found the skunk ape. Oh, I can see that, but why did you take my rifle? Do you know how much the Smithsonian would pay to have this thing? I could finally get enough money to get out of the swamp and have a real life. What? I thought you said you loved being a park ranger. You try spending your days in the hot sun with mosquitoes biting you constantly and having to listen to smelly old hippies rant all day and see how you like it. Oh, snap! Now, if you excuse me, I have to assassinate this Sasquatch. Rick, look out! What? No! He doesn't pull the trigger and then he dies. Holy! Uh, that thing really is a monster! Wah, 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 wah. Suddenly you black out. Being brave in the face of danger was never your forte, and neither was making magical amulets that were supposed to repel the skunk ape in the first place. At first you think you've died, but you realize you're still alive when the pain of being dragged over rocky terrain hits you. You come to and find yourself outside a, so a small cabin. Wh what? Where am I? Who are you? Well howdy, you must be Ben Jordan. I heard a lot about you. Dun dun dun. Who the hell are you? Of course, how rude of me! My name is Jed Johnson, and this is my humble little home. 
I think you've already met my friend, the skunk ape. Ah, uh, I take it that those were your drugs I found in the cave. Well, uh, duh. Yep, that's right. Uh, how are you able to tame the skunk ape? Oh, that part was easy. You'd be surprised how complacent a vicious beast becomes when you give him an electric collar. Ah, uh, so you've been using the skunk ape to protect your stash of drugs and having them kill anyone who got too close. You're too smart for your own good, which is partly the reason I left you alive until now. I want to have the pleasure of watching the skunk ape rip your head off and crush that clever little brain of yours. Well, that won't be so easy, because you'll have to catch me first. And Ben Jordan locks the door. Okay, Ben, think. Suddenly, there is vicious pounding on the door. Oh, uh, just great. I need to think of something, and fast. So, it turns out that there really is no time limit to this. Let's putz around here, shall we? A lamp illuminates the small cabin. Leave it on. You don't think opening the window is the best plan at the moment. Hopefully, the skunk ape won't realize that the window is a much better way to get in than the door. Let us confront our friend, the skunk ape. While you could go outside and deal with the enraged skunk ape with no weapons, you decide against it. So what are we going to do, ladies and gentlemen? Well, the only thing we can do in an adventure game, solve this puzzle. Sadly, searching under the couch cushions produces no money. However, you do find a remote control. So with the remote and control, let's turn on the TV. Turn on the TV. Let's look. Odd programming they get in here. If you didn't know better, you'd say this wasn't a television at all. It's a control mechanism for the skunk ape. Hmm. Well, uh, maybe we can throw a monkey wrench into its works. Let's throw that compass onto the TV. You place the compass on top of the TV. The magnet inside the compass causes the television to go haywire. You've messed up the skunk ape's controls. Well, what do you know? The skunk ape's controls were screwed up by a basic magnet. That has to go through... Well, anyway, let's go. Hey, why'd you come back over here? You're supposed to be killing Jordan. Hey, what are you doing? No, stop! Get away from me! And he dies. Well, nice knowing you there, Jed Johnson. So Ben Jordan has actually killed like two people. One invert one inadvertently and one like kinda willfully. It's a long story, but the skunk cave won't be a problem anymore. Oh. Did you kill it? No. But he was being controlled by a drug trafficker who is no longer with us. Hmm. Hmm, I see. What about Rick? Ah, uh, he didn't make it. That's a shame. Hmm. Well, Ben Jordan, despite the shadiness and the skeeziness and the questionality of your story, I suppose that getting down to business is necessary. I'll write you a check for your services. Thanks, I appreciate it. Well, Ernie, I'd love to stick around, but I haven't showered in over 24 hours, and I need to be getting home. Uh, take care of yourself, Ben. Feel free to come back and visit anytime. Maybe I will, Ernie, but for now, there's a whole world of paranormal activity I have to explore. So long! Ah, there goes the strangest man I've ever seen in my life. And so, Ben Jordan returned home after his first successful case. However, his rest would not last long, as he would soon be called upon to solve another baffling case. Writing, scripting, and art by Francisco Gonzalez. Music by Andreas Salati. Special thanks to beta testers Barry and Williams and Edmundo Ruiz. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching Ben Jordan Case 1. See you next time. It's been a pleasure.